So in this video, I want to talk about dynamic and static stretching. I want to talk about what dynamic and st static stretching are, why we do it, when we might do it, and give you some examples of how that might look. So stretching is a term that we're probably familiar with, but roughly speaking, we can break our type of stretching down into two types. There's dynamic and there's static stretching, and they're very, very different with very, very different purposes. And as a result, we need to know when to use those correctly. So dynamic stretching is where we're looking to take a muscle quickly through its range. So we're looking to contract and relax that muscle and dynamically take it through an elongation of the muscle fibers and a shortening of the muscle fibers. A static stretching in some ways is the opposite. This is a long elongation of the muscle fibers. So it's when we look to get into a certain position and hold that position so that we're stretching those relevant muscle fibers and we wanna hold that for an extended period of time. So why are we doing these two things? And then that might help us to understand when we should be using them before sporting competition. So why we do dynamic stretching is really to prepare the body for what it's about to uh, undertake really. So if we take before the start of a football match, we know that as soon as that whistle blows for kickoff, that actually the muscles are gonna have to work quite dynamically. So as a result, dynamic stretching is looking to mimic this and actually, sort of dynamically and take these muscles through range by contracting and relaxing those muscle fibers so that it allows the body to start to prepare. It allows the body to start to recruit those muscle fibers. It allows for a dramatic increase in the amount of blood supply that's being sent to those muscles. All things that can not only help us to perform better, but reduce our risk of injuries. Really, it comes down to preparation. Now, static stretching is where we're really looking to increase the elasticity or the flexibility of those muscle fibers. So this is where we're looking to take a muscle into an elongated state and hold that. Now, the whole thing here is really us trying to communicate with the brain when we're doing static stretching. What we actually want to happen is a message to go to a brain to say that those muscles are being elongated, they need to be relaxed or over time they need to have more capability to have extra elasticity and that would lead to an increase in flexibility. And this really happens by the receptors that we have in those muscle tissue sending a message to a brain. So once we hold those muscles for a set period of time, that message is pinged to the brain and the response that we are looking for happens. So when would we be using these types of stretches? Well, knowing the purposes, hopefully it lends itself to understanding when we should use those around a football match. So for example, a warm up, what the basis of our stretching wants to be dynamic. We said that this is preparing the body for what it's about to undertake. So if we know that we're gonna be running, jumping, sprinting, kicking very quickly, we wanna be using that dynamic stretches within a warm up. We wanna be preparing the body so that it's not a shock when that whistle goes. And ultimately it will allow for greater performance as well once we're on the pitch. But then when, once we've played that game and we've used those muscles extensively, that's when the muscles are left then in a short and tight position. So when we finish the match and as part of our cool down, that's where static stretching can come into play. And this is where static stretching can be really helpful to take those muscles that we've left in a shortened state because they've been working and contracting for the duration of the match and actually start to lengthen those muscle fibers out so that we can get the desired response of relaxing the muscle tissue. Now the other time that static stretching comes in helpful is to be used daily. Because if we're constantly performing these stretches, the brain is getting this constant message that those fibers need to be increased in terms of that elasticity. And what happens is that we get a response that those muscles become more elastic or more flexible. And therefore we can get those desired flexibility results from static stretching. So in summary, dynamic stretching should be done progressively. So we wanna build dynamic stretching, not going into the stretches being too dynamic too quickly, but it's a great thing to do when we're warming up or when we're preparing for sport, exercise and competition. And then once we finish that, or once we want to increase the elasticity of the muscle fibers, that's where static stretching comes in, both at the end of games and then to be completed daily throughout the week, preparing for the next game ahead and ultimately the remainder of the season. I hope that's been helpful for you. I've tried to put some of the examples of static stretches and dynamic stretches, but again, if you want further advice, further questions around this, feel free to drop me a comment and I will make sure I come back to you. And feel free to subscribe to this channel so I can keep you updated on tips about your health and well-being.